Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking out the... Uh, I don't really know how to pronounce that. I'm going to go off of uh, a couple other the channels that I've seen. They pronounce it the Bajoni. I don't see a J in there, but then again, neither am I an expert on pronouncing Russian words. So we'll just go with Bajoni and smile and nod and pretend that that's correct. The Bajoni is a tier 6... It is basically the Russian equivalent of a Cleveland. That's it in a nutshell. You don't need to watch the rest of the video. Go home. But no, no, seriously, it is basically a Cleveland. Um, key differences. The, it does not have as nearly as good of armor as the Cleveland. The hit point pool is not quite as hard, high as the Cleveland. It has three main turrets, two in the front, one in the back. Uh, unlike the Cleveland that has two in the front and two in the back. Battle starts. It also has those wonderful, wonderful Russian guns. Uh, very high velocity, very flat trajectory. The AP on it is phenomenal. However, you are a cruiser, so you will be using HE a lot. And after, uh, I think it was two patches ago, they did up the percentages on all the Russian cruisers. Um, I'm not sure for all of them, but I know this one was one of them that got a couple uh, extra percent chance to fire. Plus, on my commander, I got the um, Demolition Expert, which gives it another 3%. Uh, I think I'm floating at 16 or 17% chance to catch fire, and that's basically as high of a percentage as you can hope for, uh, even for the Japanese cruisers, which is exceptionally good. The HE gets the job done. Other characteristics on this, it's fairly fast in a straight line, it does go well over 30 knots, which is nice. Uh, you are fast enough to kind of sort of run down destroyers. You're not going to be faster than most of them, but you can definitely keep up, especially if they're, you know, zigging and zagging and slowing themselves down. You can see, like, this is at 10 kilometers, and see how flat those shells are? They never leave the screen. And, I mean, I'm landing shots on a moving, dodging destroyer at 10 kilometers out. That's pretty impressive, especially if you've played the Cleveland any times recently. One of the main downfalls of this ship is it has an absurdly long turn radius. Uh, it just takes forever and a day to make this ship turn around. The turrets are medium fast, so that's not a huge issue, especially considering that it has two front guns. So you can kind of approach this as you do high-end battleships that have the two guns in the front, one in the rear. The one in the rear is just kind of icing on the cake. Focus on having your front two guns uh, being your main offense power. I mean, you're, you're basically using two-thirds of your DPS, as opposed to if you were one of those ships that had two in the front, two in the back, or some other variation, you're going to be losing at least half your DPS in that situation. That being said, you remember I said the armor is not that particularly good. The armor from the front is pretty good. If you keep your nose pointed at a target, they're going to have a very hard time settling you. And here we're going to show off the great AP damage. Uh, get a Furutake here. Bam. Four citadels. Four. Oh, that felt good. I try and get it up, but he's already learned his lesson. He is turning off very fast. Uh, I got a measly little 800 damage on that one. I switched to HE after I clear my barrels the last... Eh, yeah, 1,000 damage. Uh, honestly, I'm going to do better damage with the HE. Anyhow, uh, keeping your nose pointed at a target, and you'll see me do this later on in this replay, uh, does really help your survivability. Uh, another really good point on this ship is it has phenomenal range on its guns uh, with the upgrades that I've got set up. Uh, I think I'm floating at about 16 and a half, maybe, kilometers, uh, which is about as far as you would want to go before you start just getting really, really inaccurate. Oddly enough, it has a scout plane, and it's low enough tier that you can't switch that over to a fighter, which is really unfortunate. Uh, it does come in handy every once in a while, so one of the drawbacks of having those really, really nice flat trajectory guns is unlike we'll say the the Cleveland, you have a really hard time firing over mountains. Um, you, you will smack your gun straight into it. So there's been a number of times where I've been very close to mountains and I want to shoot over them. 
I will use my spotting plane because it naturally makes the guns point higher up in the air. And I'll fire over the mountain. It'll, it'll allow me to clear the mountain, which it is handy every once in a while. Uh, you do have the option on your other slot for modules to either get defensive fire for AA or use the sonar. So I had a big debate about this one. Um, the defensive AA, so the AA on the Bajoni is, we'll say, use the word average. It's not spectacular like, say, the Cleveland is, but it's not terrible like the German cruisers are either. Uh, it's good enough to protect yourself, but only with defensive fire. Uh, I have had a number of uh, carriers try and attack me because they know my training radius is so low. It's very hard to avoid torpedoes, especially from close range, like carrier drop torpedoes are. And it's very likely that they'll actually get torpedoes on you. So having that defensive fire is very handy. Uh, in this replay and recently, I've been testing out having sonar instead. For almost the same reason, it's very hard to turn your ship. And... You are a cruiser. The guns are exceptionally good at killing destroyers just because they're very high uh, velocity and very very fast moving, very low trajectory. So it's very easy to aim at those moving, dodging, weaving uh, destroyers. But they are going to be shooting their torpedoes back at you. And being able to see them just a hair closer when you have sonar up really has saved my life a number of times. So... I think both modules are equally useful. However, dot dot dot, fighting carriers is somewhat rare. Um, now, you're in tier 6, so you'll get a lot of tier 5 and tier 6 carriers that are still playing and haven't been playing carriers long enough to realize that the, the game really is not very favorable to carriers at this point in the game. Hopefully future patches will fix that, but there, it's pretty normal to get those carrier games. But you're not exactly a high priority target for them. And nor is your AA good enough, nor is the range on your AA good enough, that you can help cover friendly ships like, like you could in a Cleveland. A Cleveland that's gone, you know, somewhat, if not full on AA spec, can absolutely escort your battleships or your carriers around and use their defensive fire to basically nullify any car inbound carrier attacks. The Bajoni's AA is not good enough to do that. It's basically the only use for it is to defend yourself from carrier attacks. So that being said, I'm thinking I'm siding with sonar. I, I find myself using it a lot more, especially because I like chasing down destroyers in this ship. Right now, even though I know that my AP shells do a hell of a lot more damage uh, overall, I don't have any good angles on these battleships, and shooting at an angled battleship in your cruiser is not going to do much. So instead, I'm trying to keep my nose pointed at these two, and I'm just spamming HE back and forth between them, and keeping both of them on fire. So I just got two more fires on that guy, and now I'm going to just switch back to the war spite, and catch him on some more fires. And I'll just keep doing this, and yes, eventually the fires go out, or yes, they will, you know, burn their repair, uh, their, their repair ability to put the fires out. And that's okay, I'll just then fire at the other one. So his fires just went out. And now I just caught him back on fire. Uh, it's kind of frustrating for them, and that's kind of the point. Um, you'll see them, they, like, right here, they're taking their little pot shots at me. And I'm keeping my nose pointed at him. Uh, the Bajoni is a fairly narrow ship. And there I just burned one of those, uh, that, that, uh, I think it was a Texas? It was a Texas or New Mexico. Doesn't matter. It was a battleship. And, uh, I think after the, the in-game screen, oh, I think it was like 35,000 damage done to that battleship. That's more than half his life, just from my own little cruiser. But I'm keeping my nose pointed at him. There's not much for them to shoot at, and even if they do connect, it's very unlikely that they're going to citadel me from head on like that. Like, I think he makes a little contact here. Nope. Just passed right over me. And there's another fire. We're up to 13 fires already, and we haven't even hit the 10 minute mark. And that's a lot of fire damage that I'm doing to these battleships. So we cleared house up here. Time to turn back in the fray. Oh, there's a nice juicy little destroyer. Let's take pot shots at him. 
Um, despite the fact that he's 15 kilometers away, I get pretty damn close to hitting him on a number of those. Overall, I really like the Bajoni. It's it's a pretty rock solid ship. So you're coming from having the uh, the tier five, uh, uh, the Kirov. Yes, the Kirov is one of those ships that I wanted to love so bad. The guns on it are phenomenal, even better than the ones here on the the Bajoni. Uh, they hit like rocks. However, it is made of paper mache, and uh, try as I might, I just I couldn't get any exceptional games on that. I tried over and over to try and get a game that was at least entertaining enough, even if it was a loss, to put up on my YouTube channel, and I just couldn't make it happen. And it's not a bad ship. It's just I would have some great rounds that started out, and I would, you know, blow the crap out of a couple ships right off the bat, and then instantly get barbecued one-shotted uh, by something I didn't even see that just took a random shell and I wasn't even like full broadside it just there, there's no angling on that ship there's nothing you could do to just avoid being citadel it is a giant citadel from stem to stern uh, yeah it was frustrating the Bajoni has a lot 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 better armor than the Kirov and for that matter the Maltov I've fought a number of Maltovs uh, the premium tier six uh, in this ship, uh, though I don't think there are any in this game. And um, same tier, but the the Maltov is basically a souped-up version of the Kirov, in my opinion. Uh, has a little bit nicer guns, but it's still a floating citadel, and I absolutely wreck those Maltovs. Uh, the moment they give me any kind of side at all, it doesn't even have to be completely flat. They just give me some angle. I will throw AP shells into them and they will just melt. So it's just one of those things you gotta keep in mind. Thankfully all of these ships have pretty good uh, range. So it's you just gotta be careful not to get out in front. Like here I have a battleship directly in front of me and he's taking a lot of heat. In the meantime I'm just tearing this Kamikaze R up. Uh, he's very dangerous. I love my Kamikaze R. I've made a number of videos but now he is dead. And I never got within, I think, eight kilometers to him. It doesn't matter. Uh, I, I have the, the accuracy to just absolutely tear him to shreds. It's a great ship. I've been enjoying the hell out of it. I hope to have a lot more videos for you. Um, I'm actually played it so much, I've, I've almost got the next one unlocked. And I think this is going to be one of those keeper ships where I don't sell it to help buy the next ship. I think I'm actually going to plunk down some real world money, buy another port slot, start a brand new commander or captain, and then buy the uh, the tier 7, I believe, what is that, the Shores? I think so. Um, I've just been having so much fun with this ship. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and I, and I hope uh, you learned something about the Bajoni. If you're in the middle of grinding out the Kirov, and you're not liking it, have a little bit of faith. I, I really... The, the Bajoni really changed my opinion about this entire line. I'm having a lot more fun. And uh, if any of the other destroyers uh, on the cruiser line for the Russian side are anything like this, I'm going to have a lot of fun going up through that, that entire tier, uh, or the entire tree. Uh, having a lot of fun with this ship. It, it's, it's like what the Cleveland used to be before it got nerfed really bad. But I'll see you guys next time. I hope you had fun. Come on, end it by getting this kill. Come on. Alright, that's a better ending. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time, folks.